In this video, we'll see how to calculate confidence intervals for proportions using the TI-84 graphing calculator. Consider example 8.1. Now, we know that to access the confidence interval calculator, we need to hit STAT and go over to TESTS. We saw before using Z interval and T interval is appropriate for confidence intervals for the mean. When doing a proportion confidence interval for one sample, such as in section 8.3, use choice A, one prop Z interval. You'll notice there's no choice between data and stats because the data sets themselves would actually just be yeses and nos to a question a lot of times and they're rather uninteresting. So you'll almost always be given the number of yeses and the total number in the sample size. So the sample size is n. Uh, in this problem it is 500 people were surveyed and X is the number of successes, usually if it's a yes or no question, and the number of yeses. But uh, pay attention to the way it's worded. Here it's 421, and we get to put in the confidence level as a decimal, so 0.95 is already correct. And then hit calculate. So we are 95% confident that the true proportion of people who would uh, own cell phones is between 81% and 87%. Now there's another thing we want to do in this section, and that is to figure out what that sample size should be in order to have a certain um, certain margin of error. Um, so we'll do this comp problem here, 8.14. Uh, we'll be given a confidence level, and we need to figure out what the z-score is that goes along with that. So I remember if our confidence interval is say 90%, that leaves 10% for the two tails, and that's 5% for each tail. So we want to tell the calculator that the area to the left is 5%, right? So half of the complement of the confidence level. It's alpha over 2. And keep that as 0 and 1, and then that should be our critical value. Now again, we want the positive one, but we're squaring, so it doesn't really matter. All right, And so we'll take that uh, answer and square it. And then we want to multiply by p and then q and then divide by the error squared. Um, now if we don't have p and q, we just use 0.5. And it doesn't look like we do have a value there. So if you have an estimate for p and q, um, then you would use that. Um, say a previous survey was done and you know the proportion estimated to be something, you would use that for P and Q. Um, if not, use 0 0.5. So, um, right. so we'll just do that. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, and then we divide by the margin of error. It says here you want it to be within 5 percentage points. Now 5% as a margin of error, you want to use the decimal version of that. So that's 0 0.05, right? That's your 5%, and that needs to be squared as well. All right, and then we hit enter, and then don't forget to round that up. So our answer would actually be 270.